Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 22. My name is Jason Rippleding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC, along with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. Uh, today is July 7th. Hopefully everyone had a, a safe July 4th. And the 11-month window for today is June 7th, 2022. The seventh month window is February 7th, 2022. Do you get a lot of rental requests like around Valentine's for? Uh... Yeah, there's definitely a bunch that come in. Plus also you've got um, the hol- holiday around that time as well, President's Day. So a lot of times requests for Valentine's Day, President's Day starts getting a little busier. So we'll get those in very, very soon. And uh, just remember again, at, at your home resort, you can book up to 11 months in advance. Uh, the other resorts is seven months. So that's why we mentioned those dates. And uh, so it's, it's been a few weeks. If you've made some offers uh, with us or other companies, you might have noticed, especially if there's a lot of people out there that have bought and sold many times. So right now, Disney just made an announcement on June 25th. Now, when we submit for rider first refusal, there's some additional information that's required. One, date of birth. You do have to be to be on the deed, you have to be 18 or older. Um, they want your marital status. They want your salutation. Uh, they also want your mailing address, telephone number, and email for each buyer. So if you have five names on the deed, in the past, Disney would only want one mailing address. Yeah. Now they want all five uh, mailing addresses. Um, and one thing I'll just say, uh, In regards to date of birth, so I've been selling Disney Vacation Club properties since 2004. Only one time I did see a transaction where someone went to sell a property. They had bought it directly from Disney, so it wasn't any resale company. And and somehow their four-year-old was on the deed. Really? When they had bought the property directly from Disney. I don't know how that worked out, but they had their child. Their child was now four, so it had to go through a, a series... Uh, to get the deed cleared up before they could sell the property. You think that's possibly what happened? That maybe they're getting somebody was sneaking on people who are under eighteen somehow. So, so I mean, again, I, I mean, Disney doesn't like to do stuff twice. I'm assuming that when you buy directly from Disney, that they want the birth date for everybody. Mm. Um, whenever we take an offer, we always ask, you know, any names on the deed, and you have to be eighteen or older. So I don't know if if. Uh, you know, if I, maybe Disney just wants to make it uniform. They're saying, hey, if you buy directly from Disney, we want to get everybody's birthday. If you buy resale, we want to get everyone's birthday. That, I don't know. Uh, marital status. Now, most times when you purchase, you're going to fill out a form with the title company and, and you're going to indicate on there your marital status because it has to do with preparing the deed, things like that. But it's never been a requirement to send it for rider first refusal, whether they fill out that form five days later. And I'm not 100% sure if that form always goes to Disney. And then the salutation is definitely new, you know. Um, you know, whether a person wants to be indicated as Miss, Miss, or Mrs., um, you know, and then, so that's, that's never been an issue of, of why, you know, you know, why they want that, I don't know. And then the mailing address, you know, for the longest time, if, if, if you had five people on the D and you tried to give Disney all five mailing addresses, they would say, we only, there's only going to be one. So now they want all five mailing addresses. They want all five telephone numbers and they want all five different email addresses. So, so if you're out there and you're, you've bought before and you're saying, hey, why are you asking me now? This is why. Yeah. So it's just, it's a new process. And I'm sure everyone's going to get used to it in a relatively short period of time, and it's just going to be the norm. Yeah, just more stuff for us to have to do and update contracts and everything. But it's we, we roll with it. You know, Disney says they want new stuff. You know, we have to do it. They want. So, uh, so that's that. Now we, we, we've had some introductions in the past, and we've had we're up to 20 episodes. I think we just need to ask. Yeah. Scott, some questions here just so we can get him to know him just a little bit more. So uh, we'll do some rapid fire questions here. You ready, Scott? Rapid fire questions, okay. Well, I don't know how rapid it's gonna be, but it just sounds more dramatic that way, I guess. Yes, it does. So if you can only pick one Disney character 
to visit your holiday party, which character are you going to choose? Does it have to be like, like how do you, Captain Jack? You can. Captain Jack, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow, I think he'd be a lot of fun at a party. All, all a, the rum will be gone, but I think that'd be fun. That's a very good answer. I like it. <laughs> okay, now, you can have a lifetime pass to one Walt Disney World park. Which one are you choosing? I think Epcot. Epcot? Yeah, I just think that Epcot, well, you know, there's more rides at Magic Kingdom stuff. I just think that Epcot... It's the park that I like to go to the most. Um, I love walking on Epcot at night. You've got best food options, personally, I think, on Disney property. Lots of restaurants, lots of different, you know, everything's country-related, so you've got lots of choices on there. And just, I think it's, it's a lot a lot of fun, Epcot. So if I, I, I guess one pass, I, mean, I have annual pass, but, you know, pass to go to just one specific park, Epcot. So this is, yeah, this is a lifetime pass. You don't it's have lifetime to... lifetime pass, Epcot. Epcot, okay. So let's say you go to the pool. Are you a... Are, they, are we going to find you chilling poolside, or are you going to be going down the water slide frequently? Gotcha. Um, I will be poolside. Poolside. Now, you, you, may, you may catch me go down the water slide once every now and then, but most of the time I'm going to be poolside. And honestly, most of the time when I'm poolside, I'm going to have my laptop with me because I'm going to be working and checking stuff as well. But definitely poolside. Okay. So now, when you mentioned Epcot, you like the food there. So are you more of a... A dinner guy, like I'm looking forward to this restaurant so I can enjoy a nice dinner, or are you more a dessert guy, like I have to go here to get this dessert? Are you a more dinner or dessert person? Well, based on all of my, my food reviews, you'd probably think that I'm a dessert person because that's mostly what I've been doing on here, but I'm more of a dinner person. I, besides doing the food reviews where I get like a snack or something, I barely ever order dessert at all, so I'm, I'm more of a dinner guy. Okay. So what is your favorite month to visit Walt Disney World? Favorite month? I mean, if it was like one time to come down here, I, I would say probably end of October into November. If I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Like if you're looking for the best month to come down here, favorite month here, October, because you, you've got the typically Halloween parties, the boo bash that they've got this year. You've got all the Halloween decorations. And then as soon as Halloween ends, you know, they put up all the Christmas decorations. So the weather is great. End of Oct. If I'm, you give me one week. I'm well, I mean, spanning I, October into November. I mean, if I right give there. you a month and you're saying October fifteenth to November fifteenth, I mean that is a month. Yeah, period. Can, so I perfect. Guess. Then I'll, I'll go October fifteenth, November fifteenth. But you can squish it down a little bit if you want. That nice little carryover where they do the switch from Halloween to Christmas decorations, I think, is one of the most magical times to go because you get to two great options in there. And what is your favorite snack at Walt Disney World? Favorite snack is probably caramel apple cookie in Epcot at a Caramel Kush. Uh, we also do get the caramel popcorn from there a lot as well. The caramel popcorn is probably the snack we've gotten the most often. Overall snack anywhere is, is probably the, the caramel apple cookie. Now, I forget. Have we, have we done reviews on those? Or? I don't believe so. I don't think we've actually what? done. I know. How, how is, wait, did you guys just hear that? We just discovered his favorite snack. We're up to episode 22, and we have, this is what, like, this is, I don't even know what to say. They, really. They've changed it a little bit recently, and it's not as good as it was previously, so oh, maybe that, 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 that must be why I, I haven't done it as much, but caramel apple cookies, great. There, there, there's so many good snacks, I, I don't even know anymore. It's, it's all a blur. Oh. I'm in diabetic coma. <laughs> Favorite DVC resort? Get that one all the time. Uh, Boardwalk is my overall favorite resort. I'm also a huge fan of Animal Kingdom, though. I just the, the very opposite. Boardwalk's got so much stuff going on, great food options, great access to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios, access to the Skyliner. That there, There's a lot of stuff to do. And I always tell people, if, if you've got kids that are teenagers or older teenagers that, you know, they're coming to Disney, they're Disney fans that maybe, you know, they're, they're looking for more, Epcot's a fantastic option because there's a lot of stuff to do at nighttime. Whereas you go to Animal Kingdom, which I absolutely love, super exotic, wonderful, beautiful hotel, Savannah View where you can see the animals. You go back to Animal Kingdom at night, there's nothing going on. It's super quiet and nice. It's a nice contrast to places like Epcot, sorry, to Boardwalk. Because at Boardwalk, you know, if you want to go back and hang out at the, ho at the hotel, you're fine. You've got teenagers, you can let them walk around there and there's a lot of activities to do. Same thing with Saratoga Springs where you've got Disney Springs right there. So, <clears throat> like the, everything that's going on at Boardwalk, but then Epcot's just so beautiful and quiet that's a really nice contrast to it. And I forget, do you have a preference, Jumbo or Kadani? I personally like Jumbo House. Um, I just 
the reason I like Jumbo House and, and really it's the lobby, right? If I it's, yeah, that's right. It, it's just the lobby. When you walk, it's, I think it's one of the things. It was one of the first resorts I went to when I stayed at DVC. It was Boardwalk and Animal Kingdom were my first two. And when you walk into Jumbo House, it's just so big and open and airy, and it just it, it feels impressive. Kidani's really cool as well. It's just much smaller and not as impressive. So you know, you know, the rooms are very very similar. In Kidani, once you get to the larger rooms, one bedrooms and two bedrooms and stuff, you get an extra bathroom. So Kidani does get the edge there. But I just love Jumbo House because we normally stay in studios and just the lobby of Jumbo House. Just I don't want you feel good about yourself. I don't want to say like you know oh. You get to the point where you're like, oh, I've made it. But I, I never thought I was going to stay at hotels like that. And when you walk in the Jumbo House, I go, this is a beautiful, impressive hotel. So, I, again, and I, I, I never honestly would want to spend $500, $600 a night directly through Disney to get these hotels. So when I'm a DVC member and, you know, it's much, much cheaper for us. So when you rent points half the price, you know, that's when Jumbo House and Animal Kingdom, all of them really, really shine. It's one of the less expensive DVC rooms and again, it's just, it's a beautiful, amazing resort and just super impressive, especially that lobby. And so if you can get first in line for any Walt, Walt Disney World attraction the rest of your life, what are you choosing? I'm going to go with, and one of the reasons is just wait time alone, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Really like the ride. It always has a long line to it. So I mean, like, it's not my favorite overall ride, but like, I love Haunted, Haunted Mansion. It's probably my overall favorite. Pirates, there's a, a zillion rides, but I don't get to go on Seven Dwarves as much as I would like, just because the, the wait time always stinks. So I think that would probably be my one just to hedge the time option gotcha. as well. Yeah. And what attraction will you most likely never go on again? If there is one that exists. Oh, the, uh, the fine, well, when you say again, I can tell you, here's one I will never go on because I've never done it previously. You're not getting me on those teacups. And there, there was a time when I was younger where the teacups might have been fine, but I have no interest in just literally just spinning and going in circles. You know, the, there's other rides that, you know, maybe I'll, I'll deal with the spinning because I love the ride. You know, there, there's great stuff coming where you go, all right, I'll deal with the spinning part for a section. But when the entire ride is literally spinning in a circle while it goes in a circle, not my cup of tea. Gotcha. See what I did there with cup yes, of tea? We, we got it. That wasn't planned. It was just a cup of tea. And best tip you would want to give someone visiting Walt Disney World for the first time? My best tip is to slow, slow down and break it down a little bit. I think the best thing would be go to, go to a park in the morning. When it starts getting a little more crowded and a little hotter during the day, go back to your hotel Enjoy the pool. Enjoy the hotel. Take a nap. This is especially good if you have small kids. hotel, go back to your DVC resort. That's booked with us. But go back to the resort. Relax. A lot of people, you know, do commando. They'll go the entire day at, at a resort at a at a park, and your kids are having a meltdown by eight o'clock at night. Or the adults. The, yeah, I have a meltdown too. But yeah, he's, he's just knocking his mic down. Look at this. But. Yeah, go early in the morning wait, before it gets too crowded, when there's not a lot of lines, go back to the hotel midday, relax, go for a swim, take a nap. If your kids want to take a nap, you take a nap too. You'll feel better about yourself. Then switch, go to a different park at night because the parks are completely different from the day than they are at night. Everything's lit up, different music. It's, just, it's a very different experience. So hit one park in the morning, mellow out, calm yourself down. You're, you're, you're going to need it. Your feet are going to need it. Your kids are going to need it. And then at nighttime, go to a different park, and just will be a little less hot, a little, little, possibly a little less crowded, and completely different experience. So spread it out and split the parks if you can. Plus, if you're at a resort, I mean, even if you're at a studio, you have the refrigerator, some different options, or if you're in a one bedroom, you know, make yourself a snack, relax, you know, to me. And, and, and truthfully, a lot of people who go commando, it's because they're not staying at a resort that you'd want to go back and enjoy. You know, the DVC resorts are fantastic. You know, all of them have big, Feature, feature pools, really nice, more space. So I mean, a lot of pe I'll see people online saying, oh, I don't want to spend this much for a Disney room because you know I'm, I'm not going to be there at all. I'm literally going to go there to sleep. When you stay at the DVC resorts, you want to enjoy the hotel more because there's a lot more stuff to do. It's a nicer atmosphere. Your rooms are bigger. The amenities are nicer. The pools are nicer. So you know, it's, it's nice to you know, split those parks with a nice stay in the middle during the midday where you enjoy the resort. Yeah, I mean, you can go swimming, you can play chess. 
Was play bocce, bocce ball, play, play, play some basketball courts. Ping pong, pool ping, tables. Yeah, there's lots of stuff to walk around. If you're at Animal Kingdom, they, you go look at the animals. They've got flamingos out there. There's lots of stuff to do no matter where you are. You know, just enjoy the resort more. Or again, just take that break midday. Take the nap. You, you'll, you'll feel better. And, okay, that's, that was all the questions. You, he passed with fine colors. Oh, good. I, I, I we, we did discover that we need to get some reviews for his for his favorite snacks, though. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to force myself to go. I, I I haven't gone to the parks in in a little while now. It's been it's been a couple of weeks, if I'm being honest here. It's been, I I I need to try some more foods. I, I've got I've got my food review planned and everything. But I'm going. I need to I need to head back to try some new stuff. So that's what we're up to next. Your weekly food review. Oh. Come here. I'm gonna eat you. Get in my belly! Excellent. All right, so weekly food review. This is the Brer's uh, Bread and Butter Pudding at Raglan Road. Uh, one, of, one of my Facebook friends recommended this, mentioned how much he loved it, and if he's watching this, he's probably not watching it. <laughs> See, he'd probably be mad at me. Because again, I, as I mentioned previously, I try to be as honest with everything as possible. Wait, are we about to, are we about to get another low score here? It's not low. It's just not as high as some people would like. And I, I, I want to specify that I, I, I do a lot of work on Facebook during the day. And I, I see a ton of people in these you know, Disney food groups and everything. And, I mean, honestly, they'll, they'll post pictures of like 26 things that they'll eat on their trip. And 80% of them, they give a 10 out of 10. I'm going, for, honestly, for us, for, for 10 out of 10, that's going to be like a perfect food. I mean, I have to go, this, this is like the best food I've ever had. So I, I try to be honest. And, you know, I... I Figure average is like a five. So, you know, if I think when they give these scores, if they give a five, that means it's like disgusting. So I just try to be, average. I try to be as honest and accurate as possible. So the bread and butter pudding, bread and butter, yeah, putting it at Raglan Road. If you like French toast, it's like mushy French toast. I, I somewhat enjoyed it. My wife did not enjoy it at all. It, it's, it's got a little crust on top and they give you like a warm, like caramel sauce to put on it or and warm, like, like a, um, milky butter sauce. It was definitely decent. It's $11. I gave it a 6.4. It's one of those things that I go, don't get me wrong, I ate the whole thing because I'm a pig. But I wouldn't order it again. And especially for $11, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't try it again. And, and that, that's one. That, that's what they're known for. This is at Raglan Road in Disney Springs. A lot of people say you've, you've got to try this. And you should probably try it as well because I've never had anything like bread pudding before. I don't know. Have you had bread pudding? If I have, I don't recall at the moment. Yes, I think a lot of people are used to it. It's, it's, maybe it's just one of those things that you go, you know, you weren't, you didn't know what it was going to be like, you know, once you try it a second time, you'll really appreciate it. I wasn't sure. Again, I, I like French toast. It just felt like it was kind of mushed up French toast in there. But again, not bad. I mean, it's a 6.4. It's, it's decent. You know, for $11, definitely wouldn't, I wouldn't get it again now, but it, it was, it was pleasant ish. Uh, yeah, ish. I wouldn't get it again. I don't like that. But. <laughs> All right, so I know we have. I give, I give the worst reviews, don't I? We, you have to start giving these because I, well, I just I mean, don't I, like enough. I would just pick desserts and something chocolate and anyway. So, um, so now we're on to we had another guest sharing their personal experience, uh, which yes. is always exciting. And again, we would love for you to share any tips that you have. You're, if you're watching this and you say, "Man, these they're not talking about this, or they're not talking about this, they're not telling people this," hey. Shoot a video. We'll be happy to include you in the video. You can share any tips or whatever you you want to share. So this is from uh, Chris. This is our buddy Chris Malik, and uh, I believe he lives in Illinois. Yes, he, he lives in Illinois. Um, he, he does have a house down here as well that he just purchased recently. So he's going to be going back and forth a little bit. He's mostly, but he's, his main house is up in Illinois. All right. So hopefully you enjoy. Uh, Chris sharing some of his experience. Yeah, take it away, Chris. Hello, my name is Chris Malik, and I'm the host of a Disney podcast called the Dub Dub Review Podcast. And I'm recording this video because I'm also a DVC owner. So I wanted to go and share some experiences about where I own and the process of me buying DVC, both retail and resale. So we've been members since May of 2011, and we have we had two contracts at Saratoga Springs. We currently still have the original contract, which is 160 points at Saratoga Springs. My first contract we bought retail, and we bought it actually at the Woodfield Shopping Mall, which is located over in Schaumburg, Illinois, as we live, we live, we lived in Chicago, but we live around the suburbs of Chicago right now. 
at that time they had a standalone pop-up shop called the Doorway to Dreams. So they had it in a few spots in the United States. They actually had it in New York, they had it in Los Angeles, and they had it in Chicago. And it was really cool because it was the off-site location of DVC retail outside of Lake Buena Vista and over in California as well too. Cool thing about that is when you walk through the mall, you saw the big goofy on the suitcases and you saw models of the Disney Cruise Lines. They had pin trading, vinylmation trading, and it was really cool. It was like a brand of Disney and kind of a little touch with magic all the way here in Chicago when you were really missing home in Florida. One other thing is they're also really good at doing their job, you know? So when you went in the, went in the tour, you were already predetermined to kind of buy that Disney Vacation Club membership. And then once you got the speech and you knew how good they were and you knew what kind of influence uh, I would say they could have in your family's vacation memories, it was all too easy to buy retail. And to be honest with you, it wasn't until I started doing my podcast in 2015 and even a little beforehand that I learned about resale and I was like, oh, how come I didn't know about that from the start? Because the perks, we, we were never really in for the perks, being as far as we are, which is 1,200 miles away, you know, having things like the blue card getting you up to the member lounge at Epcot and whatnot, and we don't go that often, and, and you know, the see the fireworks from the top of the world lounge, it's okay. But honestly, the difference in terms of resale and retail in terms of purchasing cost, that's the number one tip is, and I'm preaching to the choir right here, is, is the amount of money you can save when you buy resale as opposed to retail. So the second thing is we bought Saratoga Springs. When we were buying in, they had Animal Kingdom Lodge, they had Saratoga Springs, they had Bay Lake Tower was the newest, uh, the, the newest property. But we chose Saratoga Springs for a number of reasons. Yes, it was the lowest cost to buy in at that time. But we did that for additional reasons, and this is probably one of our tips. When you go to Walt Disney World, everything you do all day long is hustle and bustle and fighting with the crowds. And we knew that Bay Lake Tower was going to be very similar because you were still really close to the action. But we like a slower type of vacation, so we decided we wanted our vacation resort to feel a little quieter. And in fact, Saratoga Springs does that. It's big, and there's no denying that. And they have four or five bus stops, but it's quiet. So if you want to go to the parks all day and deal with the crowds, but you want to come back for a little quieter atmosphere, not so loud, and, and, and the boardwalk's wonderful, but not so loud like the boardwalk, then Saratoga Springs might be just up your alley. It's a great place to walk. It's also really cool because when you consider Saratoga Springs' food options, you're like, yeah, Artist Palette and the Turf Club and whatnot when it's open, but uh, you're not considering that you have Disney Springs next to you. So, you know, taking, taking uh, interpretive, uh, you know, liberties, I'm gonna include Disney Springs in terms of what's available to eat and do at Saratoga Springs. So it gives you the largest dining on property because you've got now an additional 35 restaurants and 50 additional shops to pick from. So anyways, you know, my tips would be if you want a quieter vacation and you want to stay at a place that's a little more subdued with some really beautiful ponds and walking paths, Saratoga Springs is your, is your hit. They've got great pools. They've got, uh, 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 you know, Saratoga, uh, Disney Springs right next door, which offers you great dining. It's free to walk over there. When the boat's running, it's, it's, it's a great option as well, too. Anyways, uh, number one tip, learn about resale. It'll save you a bunch of money, especially if the blue card perks, which can be taken away at any time. Number two is, you know, you gotta know your vacation habits. If you wanna stay with hustle and bustle, figure out where it's close to the action. If you wanna get away in a little more quiet vacation, figure that out as well, too. Anyways, my name is Chris Malik, and again, I'm the host of a Disney podcast called The WW Review. You can find us everywhere. Uh, also, Buy and Sell DVC and DVC Dash Rental and the Dubs have been partners for, seems like forever, but uh, Scott uh, and Shannon are some of my closest friends now, so um, I'm proud to uh, you know, be able to go and, and talk a little bit on their, uh, their DVC Weekly show. If you have any questions, reach out to me. My last name is Malik, M-A-L-E-K. You can find us on the Dub Dub Review Facebook page or in our listener group, which is Edcott. And uh, enjoying this beautiful day in Illinois. You guys have a great day. Thanks. So we hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, got to hear from Chris. Uh, we appreciate you watching. And again, remember, if you're looking to rent out your points, you want to go to DVC-Rental. They can help get your points rented out. They can make the reservations for you. Uh, they can do everything. 
Uh, if you're looking to rent points, you want to go to the same place. If you're looking to possibly sell your DVC, uh, you want to come to buyandselldvc.com. If you're looking to purchase, same place. We can always answer your questions uh, via the phone. You can call 407-375-3376. You can text that number. We have a chat feature uh, on the rental side. Uh, the phone number is 407-494-2320. And be sure to you know like this video, subscribe. Uh, we hope you come back. If you have suggestions for us, you can either put them in the comments. You can also send me an email, jason at buyandselldvc.com. Yeah, if there's something you'd like to see or something you'd like us to cover, or just whatever, you know, we're, we're open to stuff. You know, we all live locally. So if there's something that you, we'd lo I'd love for you to go here or, you know what, I've heard this food is fantastic. Try this out. You know, we're, we're always open to suggestions and we'll do what we can. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.